Good morning, friends. I am Santosh, the priest of the Anglican Parish of Broadview and in Peter. And greetings to you, to all of you. This is our first attempt of stream worship. And we hope to improve our worship experience every week by making every effort to improve the content of worship, the quality of audio and video, and so on. Today we just make an attempt to begin and pray that God bless this endeavor in these changing times. I also seek your cooperation and suggestions so that the time we spend together comes more meaningful to each of you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the God of new beginnings. We thank you for this day that is gifted to us. You are the God of love and we thank you that you are with us in every change and transition. As we pray through this new season of life, help us to be assured of your presence not to be anxious of anything, but to make our request to you through prayer and thanksgiving. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on you so that we stay close to you. As we start this new journey, grant us provision for all that we need through directing of your Holy Spirit. Hear this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we listen to the reading of Psalm 27, which is very appropriate on this occasion. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to devour me, they shall stumble and fall. If an enemy encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And if war should rise against me, Yet will I trust. One thing I have asked from the Lord, which I will require, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To see the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek his will in his temple. For he will hide me under his shelter in the day of trouble and conceal me in the shadow of his tent and set me high upon a rock. And now he will lift up my head above my enemies around me, and I will offer sacrifices in this sanctuary with exaltation. I will sing, I will sing praises to the Lord. O Lord, hear my voice when I cry, have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart has said of you, Seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me or thrust your servant aside in displeasure. For you have been my helper. Do not cast me away or forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in an even path, for they lie in wait for me. Do not give me over to False witnesses have risen against me and those who breathe out violence. 
but I believe that I shall surely see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I wait for the Lord, stand firm, and he will strengthen your heart, and wait, I say, for the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and in now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Gospel reading for today is from the Gospel according to John, where we read about a miracle of Jesus. This passage offers several possibilities for the sermon, but none of those, I feel, is more important than looking into our immediate context. The context of threat to our own lives we all face today. I am also aware that some of us feel very upset about pausing our worship services. So it's my responsibility too to say why this change is unavoidable so that we happily involve ourselves into this worship design for now, take good care of ourselves, stay connected to each other, pray for each other, and be responsible followers of God. This life streaming itself explains the complexity of the situation we are in. The number of infected people in our country is increasing day by day. Now around 1,100. And our state's number is also going high. Reaching almost 70. This is not just a domestic crisis, but a global health crisis that we need to contain locally. Nations across the globe are taking drastic actions. Mass quarantines, school closures, travel bans, suspension of sports, shutting down iconic cities, social distancing and so on. Not only the Eucharist that we believe as the source of healing, but all religious gatherings are also suspended so that people do not spread the disease. People are suffering in many ways. Some of us have lost their job. Some are in fear of losing. Businesses are struggling. And things are changing every day. But containing this virus is not simple. Because we may become contagious before we know that we are sick. Or we may be getting the virus from a person who does not show any symptom of the disease. So it is too easy to spread. No vaccine is invented yet. No specific medicine is available. The only support, supporting treatment is respiratory support for those who are seriously ill, who find difficulty to breathe. And the most worrying concern 
is its rapid spread that's called the tsunami effect of COVID-19. When so many people get infected in short period of time, there's no health system in the world that can handle it with enough beds and respirators. So the only way by which this virus can be contained is by controlling the reproduction. But the difficulty is, there is no way to know how many people are currently infected, including us, who may not have any symptoms at all. Because the incubation period of this virus is about 5 to 14 days. So we can be carriers without our knowledge, or we can be infected without our knowledge. That's the reason for social distancing. And we are to play our part in the society responsibly. Some of us, of, of us parishioners are specially trained to be in the medical front and they stay at their work and we pay for them. Some are in other jobs serving the community. They also stay in their work and care for their families. We pray for them too. But many of our parishioners are elderly and they need to stay at home, take care of themselves and not expose themselves to possibilities of infection. But a challenge for them with this social distancing is a feeling of isolation. So we consider the ways by which we can show love for them. A phone call will have great meaning and will provide them a lifeline. Let us simply check with one another and pray for each other. In the coming days, we will find new ways to keep us more connected, more informed, and more focused in studying the Word of God. And I conclude this by saying a quote. After winter comes the summer. After every storm there comes clear open skies. After night comes the dawn. However long the night, the dawn will break. That's the reality of life. So we wait with this hope, take good care of ourselves, care for each other, and pray for each other. God bless. Let us pray and receive the blessings. Almighty and all loving God, we pray to you through Christ the Healer for those who suffer from COVID-19 in Australia and across the world. We pray also for all who reach out to those who mourn the loss of each and every person who died as a result of contracting the disease. Give wisdom to policy makers, skill to healthcare professionals and researchers, comfort to everyone in distress, 
and a sense of calm to all of us in these days of uncertainty. These we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who showed compassion to the outcast, acceptance to the rejected, and love to those to whom no love was shown. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.